One of the most ingrained dogmas among the followers of Muhammad is that he was illiterate, that is, he could not read and write. They have created this dogma to prove to the world that Muhammad could not possibly have created the verses of the Quran, and hence they had to have been revealed to him by Allah. Are these assumptions factual? The Quran and Muhammad's followers use this alleged illiteracy as a fact, and hence imply that the Quranic revelations are divine. This is of course utterly false and nonsensical, since the greatest legacy of the pagan Arabs was their poetry. Their poets were able to recite excellent odes although they were illiterate. Their poetry did not depend on whether or not they could read and or write. According to the historical records, Muhammad actually plagiarized some very important verses from other poets and put them in his Quran. Such poets as Imr al-Qais, Hassan bin Thabit, Zayd bin Nufayl, etc. Most relevant of all are the following hadith stories written by his followers and not by his enemies that paint a completely different picture. Sahih al-Bukhari hadith 7.573 narrated by Ibn Abbas. When Allah's apostle was on his deathbed and in the house there were some people among whom was Umar ibn Khattab, the Prophet said, Come, let me write for you a statement after which you will not go astray. Umar said, the Prophet is seriously ill, and you have the Qur'an, so the Book of Allah is enough for us. The people present in the house differed and quarreled. Some said, go near so that the Prophet may write for you a statement after which you will not go astray. While the others said, as Umar said, when they caused a hue and cry before the Prophet, Allah's Apostle said, go away, narrated Ubaidullah. Ibn Abbas used to say, it was very unfortunate that Allah's Apostle was prevented from writing that statement for them because of their disagreement and noise. It was Muhammad who demanded a pen and paper for himself to write a statement. The allegedly illiterate Muhammad was able to read and write after all. His followers who were present did not grasp the magnitude or the implications of such a request since they truly believed that he was illiterate. After all, he was the messenger of Allah who could not possibly tell a lie. They thought that he was delirious and did not know what he was saying. The fact is that it is exactly when a person is delirious that the truth comes out of him because one is not in full control of one's faculties, which would otherwise have prohibited him from telling the truth. Muhammad had been deceiving all his followers for almost 23 years, and in this manner he made them believe that he was being inspired by Allah. He had mastered the perfect scam and succeeded and is still succeeding, even as we are speaking today, into having his followers believe all his lies and fabrications in his Quran. Sunan of Abu Dawood Hadith 2993 narrated by Yazid bin Abdullah. We were at Mirbad. A man with his heveled hair and holding a piece of red skin in his hand came. We said, you appear to be a Bedouin. He said, yes. We said, Give us this piece of skin in your hand. He then gave it to us and we read it. It contained the text. From Muhammad, Apostle of Allah, to Bani Zuhair ibn Uqaysh. If you bear witness that there is no God but Allah and that Muhammad is the Apostle of Allah, offer prayer, pay zakat, pay the fifth from the booty and the portion of the Prophet and his special portion, Safi, you will be under the protection of Allah and his Apostle. We then asked, who wrote this document for you? He replied, the Apostle of Allah. The writing on the piece of skin was done by Muhammad and no one else. Al-Tirmidhi Hadith 96, narrated by Abdullah bin Amr. Allah Messenger went out and he had in his hand two books. He said, do you know what these two books are? We said, Allah Messenger, we do not know, but only that you inform us. Thereupon he said, this one which my right hand possesses is a book from the Lord of the Worlds. It contains the names of the inmates of paradise and the name of their forefathers and those of their tribes. It is most exhaustive and nothing will be added to it nor anything eliminated from it up to eternity. He then said, This one in my left hand is a book from the Lord of the Worlds. It contains the names of the denizens of hell and the names of their forefathers and their tribes. It is also exhaustive to the end and nothing will be added to it nor anything will be eliminated from it. The companion said, Allah Messenger, 
If this is the case, then where lies the use of doing a deed if the affair is already decided? Ladies and gentlemen, the most important item in this story is that it compromises the assertions by his followers that he was illiterate. Since the only way possible for Muhammad to have known the extensive contents of the two books so as to differentiate between them was if he could read, especially since they were not revealed to him by either Gabriel or Allah. This was not a case of inspiration, but of definite reading and evaluating the information within. Just as important for the listeners to know is the comment made by his followers regarding the concept of predestination that fills many of the verses of the Qur'an. Even they, who were among the most illiterate, the most unlearned and most superstitious people in Arabia, were astute enough to understand the futility of life under the concept or dogma of predestination. If people are predestined, then they have no free will to make choices, and hence there will be no need for religion, no need for prophethood, and no need for Muhammad, for Satan, or the Qur'an. And last but not least, the icing on the cake, as they say. Surah Al-Ankabut 29.48 And thou wast not able to recite Tatlu, a book before this book came, nor art thou able to transcribe it, Takhuttuhu, with thy right hand. This is an extremely illuminating verse which makes it clear that Muhammad, before his Quranic revelations, could neither recite nor write them down since he was ignorant of them. Allah makes it clear that if Muhammad had known previous revelations, he would have transcribed them, that is, write them down. Was Allah wrong?